Welcome to our Faith, Hope, and Love television ministry. We are broadcasting from our worship campus located here in the city of Memphis, Tennessee. We are the church where family comes together, and everything begins with it is finished. Now please receive our senior pastor Jeff Galmore, as we join our service already in progress. Praise God. Church, if y'all don't mind holding up your Bible or your device and say, Father, thank you that I have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to me right now. Amen. Y'all know the Spirit is always speaking. Amen. The Scripture says those that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons and daughters of God. Uh, so God is talking to us. and He's speaking to us. And uh, today he has a word. The Holy Spirit has a word for our church. And I want to get right into it and give this word so that we can enjoy some family time. Um, the last week we talked about guard your harvest. Was anybody blessed by that word? Amen. Guard your harvest. Hopefully you receive that word. It's on YouTube if you need to review it. And today I want to talk about for just a few minutes, uh, redeemed from all plagues. Redeemed from all plagues. And it'll make sense to you as we get into the message. I'm, kind of, I'm going to kind of come around the back way. Uh, to the to this message today uh, so as we heard from prophet mcclendon last week uh, god is never behind satan and in fact uh, god has declared the end of things from the beginning god has this all planned out and uh, so satan is reacting to god's plan and not the other way around and uh, church, I need us to receive this this morning as I go through this message. I'm going to move quickly. Uh, I'm concerned. Uh, concerned, maybe that's not the best word. Uh, maybe, I, maybe it is. I'm concerned. There's a lot of people who think they're in faith. But they're not in faith at all. Uh, do y'all remember the story about the issue of blood? The woman with the issue of blood? We, we got Bible students in here. And that the Bible says there were all people all around Jesus. And, and this lady touched him and, and he said, somebody touched me. And they said, Rabbi, there's all kind of people around here. What are you talking about? He said, no, no, no. Somebody touched me. So that means this lady released faith that touched Jesus. She had something. She had faith that touched him. And, and I, really, I really want us to make sure that we're not giving mental assent to faith and that we're really operating in faith. And so today I want to, as we close out this message, I want to give you some tools to, have, to help you know how you're walking in faith. Amen. Now we turn to John 16, 13. John 16, 13. Faith, faith is the most powerful force on this planet. Uh, it is the currency of the kingdom. Uh, faith is the only thing that pleases God, and we need to know what faith is. John 16, 13 says, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Isn't it wonderful to know that we have the Holy Spirit that will show us what's coming? Uh, in church, we, so we need to know that there are things coming on this earth and we just read in scripture where God said, I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you heads up on things that are coming on this earth. Amen. Our God is so far ahead of the devil until he shows us what's going to happen before they ever happen. If y'all would turn to Isaiah 40, verse 1 through 5. Isaiah 40, please. These are prophetic words to today's church. I want you to understand Isaiah was prophesying about a future time, and that time is now. He was prophesying about a time when Jesus Christ would be manifested to the earth. So here in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1 through 5, the prophet Isaiah says, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Speak tenderly to Memphis. And tell her that her sad days... All over. Isn't that wonderful news? Her sad days are gone and her sins are pardoned. Yes, the Lord has punished her twice over for all her sins. Listen, it's the voice of someone shouting, clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord. Make a straight highway 
through the wasteland for our God. Fill the valleys and level the mountains and hills. Straighten the curves. Smooth out the rough places. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all the people will see it together. The Lord has spoken. God is saying here, church, you can be at ease. I'm speaking comfort to you today. Today. To my people, I'm speaking comfort. Your sad days are over with. Now listen, this is for people who are in faith, who are walking with God, amen? Amen, who are walking with God. This would be a good time to get on the Lord's side. If y'all would turn to James 5, James 5. Remember the Holy Spirit will show us things that are coming. This is the book of James. This is the New Testament. This is New Testament scripture. We're going to read verses 1 through 5. The book of James says, Look here, you rich people. Weep and groan with anguish. The King James says, weep and howl. Because of the terrible troubles ahead of you. Your wealth is rotting away and your fine clothes are moth-eaten rags. Your gold and silver are corroded. The very wealth that you are counting on will eat away your flesh like fire. This corroded treasure you have hoarded will testify against you on the day of judgment. For listen, hear the cries of the field workers whom you have cheated of their pay. The cries of those who harvest your fields have reached the ears of Jehovah Sabah. You have spent your years on earth in luxury, satisfying your every desire. You have fattened yourselves for the day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed innocent people who do not resist you. So FCC, I need y'all to receive with me. God is telling the church, you can be at ease. But for those who are opposed to God, he says, weep and howl, because my judgment is coming for you. Amen. I'm giving you Bible this morning. God is saying, I'm coming to deal with all of you who have done wrong by my people. Can we handle the scriptures? Can we handle the scriptures? I told you all, I, uh, we've, had this, we've had this discussion, we, we've come to an agreement. Don't come to this church if you want us to just sing, uh, talk about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We are a relevant church. We deserve a relevant word that, that, that applies to where we are today. And I'm telling you right now today, God is saying, I'm not letting anybody get away. If you did wrong by my people, I'm coming for you. Can we receive the word? I'm coming for you if you've done wrong by my people. Amen. You can weep and howl. Now, there are some things developing on the earth right now. All right, flow with me, church. Will there be a second pandemic? Okay. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit said, I will reveal to you things that are coming. Okay, so I'm speaking to you by the Spirit of God that, yes, there will be. Okay. Will there, will there be civil disruption? I'm telling you by the Spirit of God, yes. Amen. Y'all flowing with me this morning? Amen. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, there will be a second pandemic. Yes, that, yes, yes, there will be civil disruption. Yesterday on my phone, I got this alert on my phone. It said, uh, uh, this is from the USA Today. It says, massive emergency alert test will sound alarms on U.S. phones, TVs, and radios in October. And then it said this will be a test, but it's going to be a very big test. And then this was on other news outlets as well. Why are they all of a sudden doing some huge emergency test? Because they're working a plan. Have y'all noticed in Memphis how all of a sudden we've been in, how many of y'all been in Memphis a long time? Have y'all all of a sudden noticed that all it's got to do is just look like it's going to rain and the power goes out? Come on now, church. Come, come on, church. Y'all don't play. Don't be slow with me. Don't, don't be slow. Don't be slow. They're working a plan. Last week I told you all during our message that Satan is in a rage. He's in a rage because he knows his time is up. Didn't I preach that last week? That he's in a rage. And there are certain people acting out because Satan is in a rage. Yesterday, we hear the news 
of uh, there's a, a a white gentleman walks in a dollar general and shoots three people anybody see that on the news y'all saw that on the news all right don't get discouraged i'm telling you the holy spirit is showing us things that are going to come and we talked about this last week that you're going to have to keep your prayer wall up because satan doesn't have anything left but violence so because he's losing and because he has lost he wants violence he wants blood in the streets and we said last week prophetically there will be victims which is why we have to keep our prayer wall up amen and I mean, a week, it didn't, didn't even take a few days, and it happened. Yesterday, this man said, I hate black people. And I'm just preaching the gospel to you this morning. I'm showing you that there's a prophetic thing going on, and we need to be aware of what's going on. Look at the screen, if you would, the 2030 agenda. If you go to this church, you should know what the 2030 agenda is. Are we familiar with that? All right, 2030 agenda, political chaos like we've never seen before, mug shots for everybody. We got pandemics on the way. We got mandatory vaccines. We got racial hatred. We got digital currency. There's something going on in the world. And the church is supposed to know what's going on. What's going on? There's some things happening on this earth. Amen? You know what's going on? Hear me good, church. I'm trying to get it through the FCC. It's harvest time. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it's harvest time. I'm telling you, if you can't, you ought to be able to see by just what the devil is doing. And he's letting you know it's harvest time. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. And what we, this message today is about we can't miss our harvest. We can't miss our harvest. Amen. Y'all would turn to Proverbs 10.5, please. Proverbs 10.5. Proverbs 10.5. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 10.5 says, a wise youth harvests in the summer. But one who sleeps during harvest is a disgrace. Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, this is not the time to be asleep. Y'all flow with your pastor. Received by the Spirit this morning. There's a whole, the, 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 the United States, I don't care what anybody says, argue with yourself. The United States has always been divided. It's always been divided. We've covered that in this church. It's always been divided. It's divided right now. You got white churches and black churches. Argue with yourself. It's always been divided. Satan wants us to miss our harvest. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Before with your pastor, I'm going to move in quickly today. Half of the world, half of the country rather, is saying, we don't like wokeness. Have y'all heard that? Anybody in the room heard that? Praise God. Help us, Father. Help them, Lord. Help them, Jesus. Let, let me tell you what they're really saying. We want y'all to stay asleep. We don't want you to have your harvest. <laughs> we, we want y'all to keep being sleep Negroes. Praise God. Don't wake up. Stay asleep. I told y'all I'd have made my decision. Y'all got to make y'all's. <laughs> I'd already made mine. I, I know where we are. They want us to stay asleep. So you got literally the, the whole Republican Party has a campaign saying we're campaigning against wokeness. Now I need y'all to understand what they're saying. We don't want y'all to wake up to who you are. Who you are in Christ. We want you to stay in bondage. We want you to stay under our feet. We want y'all to keep being the subculture. The subpopulation. If y'all would say that dog ain't going to hunt. You don't have to say it. That dog is not going to hunt. Praise God. Y'all would turn to Joel 1 please. Hallelujah. I'm racing to the back end of my message. Praise the Lord. Joel 1, we're going to read verse 1 through 5. We're talking about our harvest. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. Joel 1 says, the Lord gave this message to Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, you leaders of the people. Listen, all who live in the land. In all your history, has anything like this happened before? Tell your children about it in the years to come and let your children tell their children. Pass the story down from generation to generation. After the cutting locusts finished eating the crops and the swarming locusts took what was left, 
After them came the hopping locusts, and then the stripping locusts too. Wake up, you drunkards, and weep. Wail, all you wine drinkers. All the grapes are ruined, and all your sweet wine is gone. We're going to drop down to verse 11, please. It said, despair, all you farmers. Wail, all you vine growers. Weep because the wheat and barley, all of the crops of the field, are ruined. Church, if you'll receive with me real quickly, I've got to move quickly. Here in Joel chapter 1, we're reading... If you go study this out at home, it was harvest time, and the people of God missed their harvest. They missed their harvest. The locusts, and the, if y'all ever tried, anybody here ever tried to grow anything? Anybody tried to grow anything? Man, I'm telling you, it's a fight, man. You got to fight off bugs and, and bow weevils and birds. I mean, man, they're coming for your harvest. They come in, before you can get it, they coming for it. Okay, that's a picture in the spirit realm. The people of God miss their harvest. That's what this book is about right here. He said, tell, tell generations down the line that they miss their harvest. Amen? Then we turn to Proverbs 20 and 4, please. Proverbs 20 and 4. We're moving quickly. We're moving quickly towards the end of the message. Proverbs 20 and 4. Proverbs 20 and 4 says, the lazy man will not plow because of winter. But he will beg during harvest and have nothing. We can't do like they did in the book of Joel chapter 1. We can't afford to miss our harvest. Amen? Amen. We're not going to be found begging. Joel chapter 2, please. You flip back to Joel chapter 2 and verse 18. This is what the scripture reads. Then the Lord will pity his people and jealousy guard the honor of his land. Rejoice, you people of Jerusalem. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For the Lord reigns, he sends, for the, for the rain he sends demonstrates his faithfulness. Once more, the autumn rains will come, as well as the rains of spring. The threshing floors will again be piled high with grain. I'm in verse 24. The threshing floor will, uh, will again be piled high with grain, and the presses will overflow with new wine and olive oil. The, the Lord says, I will give you back what you lost to the swarming locusts, to the hopping locusts, to the stripping locusts. And the cutting locusts. It was I who sent the great destroying army against you. Verse 26. Once again you will have all the food you want. And you will praise the Lord your God who does these miracles for you. Never again will my people be disgraced. Watch this. What God is saying here in Joel chapter 2. You missed it the last time. But because I'm a merciful God. I'm going to give you another chance. Amen. Church can we thank God for another chance. Hallelujah. We're in a season of another chance right now. Amen. Amen. Uh, Elder Ann testified this morning. God will give you another chance. He'll give you another chance. We're in a season of another chance. God is making everything new right now. He's making it new right now. We're in a new season. Now, if you'll flip to Joel chapter 3. Joel chapter 3. I'm just going to read about four verses here. Verse 1 through 3 says, At the time of those events, says the Lord, when I restore the prosperity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather the armies of the world into the valley of Jehoshaphat. There I will judge them for harming my people, my special possession for scattering my people among the nations, for dividing up my land. They threw dice to decide which of my people would be their slaves. They traded boys to obtain prostitutes. And sold girls for enough wine to get drunk. Y'all read y'all Bible? Amen. Verse 13. Watch this. Swing the sickle. If y'all say swing the sickle. For the harvest is ripe. Come tread the grapes for the wine presses is full. The storage vats are overflowing with the wickedness of these people. Thousands upon thousands are waiting in the valley of decision. There the day of the Lord will soon arrive. Listen, God says, I'm going to restore you, Israel. I'm going to give you another chance, Memphis. I'm going to give you another opportunity. This time, when it comes around, swing your sickle. Don't miss your harvest this time. Amen. Are we receiving from the Spirit of God this morning? Don't miss your harvest this time around. It's harvest time, church. Now I got to close. If you look at the screen, how do we put in the sickle in the spirit? If you look at the screen, I'm showing you what a sickle looks like in the natural. This is what a sickle looks like in the natural when it's harvest time. 
You ever seen anybody there in the field swinging that sickle? Getting a harvest and taking it in? Amen. Elder Harris talked about being in that cotton field. You have to get the harvest at a certain time or the animals will take it from you. Amen. He says, swing your sickle. It's time to swing your sickle. Boy, this is going to be good. This is going to be, I'm closing right now. I feel like I, I might hoop today. <laughs> Elder Brew, at the top of the year, I taught a, a powerful series called Our State of Being. And I taught eight sections, eight, uh, uh, eight pieces of it. It's called Our State of Being. And this series, I, I, I really believe, Pastor Sam, it's going to take us years to catch up with what was released in that series. I'm serious. It was that powerful of a series, Our State of Being. And, and the premise of that series was that you have a state of being. And whatever your state is, that's what's going to happen to you on this earth. Whatever you truly are on the inside, that's what's coming to you. That's what you're going to read. Now, in Exodus chapter 3, God gave Moses an instruction, Brother James. He said, go tell Pharaoh, I said, let my people go. Moses said, who am I to go talk to? He said, you tell him, I am sent you. That's my name. I am. Now, I challenge you, church, to go home and look this up. Go home and look up what I am is in the Hebrew. And it's the Hebrew word, Haya. Did an eight-part series on Haya. And Haya means to be. It means it already exists. So God's name is Haya. Or I am in English. Is I am. And it means that it already exists. I'm going to show you how to put the sickle in. Put the sickle in. If y'all turn to John chapter 14 verse 13. John 14 verse 13. John 14 and verse 13. Today's message is redeemed from all plagues. What I'm saying to you is the plague will not get our harvest this time. Oh, it got us the first time. It got us the first time. Ooh, it got us good the first time. Ooh, if we're honest, it whooped the snot out of us the first time. Well, it beat us bad. It beat us bad. Come on, y'all can tell the truth. Yeah, it, be, it got us good the first time. But boy, it will not get us this second time around. Amen? John 14, 13. Church, you receive this with me. It says, and I will do Pardon me, I'm reading out of the Amplified Bible. And it says, and I will do, I myself will grant whatever you ask in my name. If y'all say in my name. As presenting all that I am. So that the Father may be glorified and extolled through the Son. Listen, church, I need y'all to receive this by the Spirit of God. What, what, what the scripture is saying here is, I'm giving you permission to use my name. I'm, from, I'm showing you how to get your harvest this time around. To not miss your harvest. I'm giving you permission to use my name. What name? I am. I am is higher. It means it already exists. It means that I am that right now. It means that's what I have. Whatever, whatever you put behind I am, that's your state of being. So if God's name is so powerful, it's so supernatural, until if you're walking around saying, I am tired. That, that's why the scripture told you, don't take the Lord's name in vain. Because whatever you put with the Lord's name, that's what you're going to have. That's what you're going to have. So if you're saying, I am poor, you're reaping your harvest because it's harvest season. It's harvest time. You bringing the plagues in your own house because you're saying, 
I am, I'm tired of this situation. I'm tired of this job. And you just brought the plagues. You just, you just come on in, plague. You bring the plagues in your own house. Missing your harvest again. Because you don't understand that God has said, I'm giving you permission to use my name. And whatever you put with I am, that's what it will be. Praise God. I'm giving you Bible. I'm giving you revelation. I am means it already exists. It means to be. That's how powerful God's name is. Higher in the Hebrew. Praise God. I feel the Holy Ghost. So church, if you repeat after me, if you would say I am healed. Hallelujah. Just take that in for a moment. Understand what you're doing. What are you doing? You're putting the sickle in right now. I told you I was going to show you how to put the sickle in. You putting the sickle in right now. That's how you put it in, in the spirit realm. We know how to do it in the natural. But do you know how to operate in the realm of the spirit? When you say I am, you're putting the sickle in. Say with me, I am restored. You just put the sickle in again. Come on, get your harvest. Get your harvest. Don't, don't be lazy. When you leave here today, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all shouting at me. But I need you to go home and get your I am's together. <laughs> it's harvest time. It's harvest time. Glory to God. It's harvest time. Hey, can I give y'all a quick testimony? We're done. We're done. I'm closing out. I'm going to close out today. Because I really believe this, and because I really live this, you know, I had a plan. I had a plan, Elder Brewer. I said, you know, thank God for this building. We started off in a little small place over there. It was just small, whole about 10 people. Then we moved from that one to another place. Then we moved to this place. And so I had it all figured out. I said, you know, we'll fill this place up and we'll go to two services here. Then after we get the two services, we'll have X amount of dollars coming in. And then we'll go find us a building and so forth and so on. But God said, no, no, no. See, you want to put, you, you'll turn around and say, look at how smart I am and what I did. God sent somebody to us and said, I got a building for you, 14,000 square foot. And, and we want you to have the building. And at this very moment, Monday, I'm having a meeting to close the door on 14,000 square foot. Hey, couldn't be me. <laughs> Look, it couldn't be us. How is that possible? Ask, come on, come on, Elder. <laughs> now I am. I like Elder Brewer. Elder Brewer. Amen. I am showed up. I am is showing us that I am did it. I am. Y'all repeat up and say, I am saved. I am strong. I am prosperous. I am free. I am blessed. I am rich. I am righteous. I am redeemed from every plague. Amen. Thank you for watching our Faith, Hope, and Love television ministry. You can find all previous broadcasts on our YouTube channel by searching Faith Community Church Memphis. If you would like to donate a tax-deductible gift to our ministry, please visit our website at www.memphisfaith.com. Please join us next week for more family-centered teaching. Until then, on behalf of our pastor and the Faith Community Church family, have a great week and please remember to keep walking by faith.